recently got in a bunch of stuff. You know, this, uh, this package here looks like it's been opened by customs. I, I really hate it when they do that. I mean, it says manifest required, and then down here it says Wi-Fi parts. I, I don't know, maybe it wasn't sufficient information for them, I'm not sure. But um, I doubt anybody over at Canada Border Services is qualified to determine whether or not these are Wi-Fi parts or not. Pretty sure I know what these are. Yeah, these are uh, they're BNC PCB mount BNC female connectors. Yeah, looks like some of them have got broken mounting pins on them. There's one, two. Some of them are slightly bent as well. Two. We got three. Four. Got four. Got four with the uh, four with broken pins, and every one has got some bending on them. That's okay. I mean, so I usually make my component footprints able to, uh, you know, take some bending in the pins. That, so I will have to get back to the vendor and uh, let them know about that. So here's the thing, right? There's, inside this bag, there's no pins. So these didn't get broken in shipping. These uh, were broken before they went in the bag. Now he's normally a pretty good vendor. He's an eBay vendor. He's normally pretty good. Like he'll, he'll either refund me the money or send me some more. Normally they're not that sloppy. They must have a new employee. Anyway, this is just, this is just for a restocking. I don't have a specific project in mind for these right now. Okay, these are just, uh, again, these are just for stock. They're 74 AC-14s, I believe. Yeah, that's exactly what they are. So again, no specific project in mind for these. I just, I used them all up in uh, going through uh, certain revisions of the fast rise time oscillator and the uh, um, time domain reflectometer which uses these so I used up a bunch of them in that now I've got to restock ah, yes. 24 megahertz oscillators I, I got these for that Jones Tech JDS 6600 you know just to play around with a little bit more I thought maybe if one of these was going a little bit fast I could put it in there and see if I could get a lot closer to being uh, accurate with that I know it's not far off at this point in time it's be nice to just play around with it and see if I could get a little bit better. So for these, I also got a little um, board made up. These tiny little boards here, which will take this and put it into a, a format that'll plug into a regular crystal socket like I put into that function generator. And um, so I got a, enough of these made up. I could just solder all these onto it and then plug them in one by one and try them out. So here's some... Uh, this is solder paste. Can I open that? This came, uh, this came off of eBay as well. Oh no, Amazon. I got this off of Amazon. That's why it's already opened up. Because generally when I order something off Amazon, I mean, like, this came in a box with uh, dog biscuits. Uh, you know, you order your stuff off Amazon the same day and they're going to ship it from the same center. And they'll, they'll just throw solder paste in with dog biscuits. Um, I suppose it's okay. I mean, like this is sealed and it's in a foil lined bag and I don't think it would uh, and it's lead free now the reason I got this um, it, it's a it's considerably more than what I normally get like I normally buy this um, stuff from MG chemicals I love MG chemicals the stuff is really good but it, it can be a little bit expensive so this was like I think this is 15 grams and costs $22 and this was 30 grams and cost $21. So I decided I'd just get one of these and try it out. Now, it's pretty much the same formula, the tin and bismuth, but this one's got a little bit of, a little tiny little bit of uh, silver in it. So it's 42% uh, tin, 57% bismuth, and 1% silver. 
So yeah, it is basically the same formula. It's at 42%, 10 to 58% bismuth. So they don't have the 1% silver. And I think it's a, a it's a much smaller size. So it's a, a, a it says it's type four. So I think that's T4. So it's a smaller size um, nodule of, of solder in there. And it might actually be easier to dispense um, using these little, these little needles that it comes with. So I, I've, I've also got another toy too solder paste dispenser oh i guess it's primarily a glue dispenser but it can also be used to dispense solder paste from these um, syringes now what it does is it just supplies a very 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 short amount of uh, air which you can set up the time uh, you can set it up uh, to do it automatically on an interval or you can uh, plug a, a switch into the back of it that allows you to just the foot operated switch or finger operated switch it allows you to dispense uh, when you want to. I haven't played around with this at all yet. I just, I really just got it and had a look at it. Uh, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to make some changes to it. Uh, this is, this is a non-standard air fitting here. So I've got to get a standard air fitting on that that I can hook up to a, a 20 gallon uh, air tank that I have. So if I pump it up to about 60 psi and then run it down to about 40, I think that's what they said in here that this. Thing that works best with between 60 and 40 psi and then uh, you know use the foot switch here for dispensing or if you wanted to if you wanted to fill these big syringes here up with uh, solder paste um, they have a, a handy little uh, switch device that can go on it there like that and you can you can operate the dispensing with your finger and they do provide uh, an air connector to go onto the back of those bigger bigger syringes but these are this is like a 30 milliliter syringe that's an awful lot of solder paste i guess if you're in a factory environment that'd be fine but i you know the way i buy my solder paste is in these little uh, 10 milliliter syringes and so i've got a, a fitting like this coming for a 10 millimeter syringe so i'm gonna wait for all that to come together and then we'll do a, a, a video on that once i get it hooked up and we'll try it out that will help with this so that's good you never have too much solder paste. Maybe you can, but uh, I don't have too much. I have two or three tubes of it around. Uh, okay, I guess I'm pretty sure I know what these are. So these are the any 5532 op amps that I'm going to use to try and fix this thing. So replace the fake uh, Texas Instruments TL074s that are in here. Now, other people had uh, great luck doing that um, in my investigations. So we're going to do that. Watch out for a video for that. So that's definitely going to be a, an interesting one. But a little while back, I was uh, you know, thinking that, you know, back in the old days, I used to do up a bunch of, um, you know, like bigger projects. I, I would attach them with different modules and stuff like that to a piece of wood and I would interconnect them using these uh, barrier strips and it's been a long time since I've used these but then again you know I kind of drifted out of electronics when I my IT career was in uh, full swing and uh, when I got back into it I had actually had difficulty finding these I, I've been thinking about them for a while but I, I found they had them on DigiKey so I just got a few of various sizes three of each I think and why are they bagging these twice? That seems like a ridiculous waste. Good lord. So I'll go, I'll go and get two of the big ones. Three of this size. And then again, double bag. That's nonsense. These static bags can't be... These are really nice bags. They can't be that cheap. This one's reusable, it doesn't have a label on, but these labels are impossible to get off. Like, it's just. Uh. Anyway, there we go. So, uh, yeah, I, I, you know, a, typically, you know, a, a three gang one like this you use for power coming in, load neutral, or line neutral and ground, and uh, then off to a transformer. So that makes it, you know, you mount everything up onto a piece of wood with these sort of things, makes it really easy to disconnect things when you need to. And, uh, yeah. These are handy and reusable for the way I use them anyway. 
And I'm just going to put them all into one bag here. It's an empty static bag, too, for something like this. Like, seriously, folks. Okay. But then did you keep put everything into anti static bags, don't they? So, I have a, a, another project around here that I've actually been working on for years and years and years. That's very typical for me. Uh, but this one, it you know, was it was kind of an emergency situation. Yeah, these are little, these are little AC to DC. So they're you put in 120 volts. DC AC here and out here comes this particular one here. Is this uh, this is the 12 volts, and then I got one at five volts as well. And the project there for is a is a well controller, which I I kind of put together. I'll I'll do a, I'll insert a little video here of what the well controller looks like, and uh, it's it's really embarrassing. But lighting is really bad here. So okay, here's my well. It's right here in, in, in the bowels of my basement. And we've got uh, two lines, two water lines coming out. We've got this inch and a quarter one here. We've got this half inch one. And uh, you know, this half inch one is, is, is part of the, the well controller. So here's the well controller. Um, you can see it's on a, a, a Arduino-like board. It actually uses an AT Mega, whatever, 228. And it goes out here to this big uh, solid state relay, which turns on the pump. It's got this uh, this pressure sensor here. It measures the pressure, and then it controls this this valve here and the pump. This cable here uh, goes down to a series of switches, float switches down in the well, so I can tell what level the well is at. And the float switches are about a foot apart, so the I've got two switches there it gives me three different zones but yeah i need to clean this up so that's um that's what those modules are for yeah this one's the five volt one so this is five volts at um 800 milliamps and this is 12 volts at 418 milliamps awesome and these are little more and sun power supplies i've used these before um various different sizes and shapes but Basically, you can just stick them in with, with double-sided sponge tape. And uh, yeah, they're really easy to mount that way. And, and because they're so small, you can mount them anywhere. You can snuck them away in there. Yeah, so these are gonna be very handy for helping me build that up properly and finally getting the thing put into a proper case and tidied up. There's more parts in here, I think. Uh, yeah, so here. Here's a bunch of uh, AT Mega 328s. <laughs> Um, I'm all out of these, mainly because I, they keep blowing up in the well controller when there was a thunderstorm. Well, not whenever, but sometimes. Yeah, the final thing I have here are these uh, Pomona test leads. I had these out. I just had to take them out. I, I just love the feel of these things. Oh, it's this, this test lead pour in this stuff. Oh, it's, these feel so nice, so supple, so... Uh. And I, I'm going to show you why I got these. Not, not only because they're, they're just really nice test leads, because they are, but they have these retractable plugs on the end of them. So I can use these, use them in my nice old fluke meters like that. So these will work in there. Very nice. I'm gonna be, uh, gonna be enjoying that. All right, guys, that's all I have for today. And, uh, We'll see you in the next one.